Welcome to a Degenerate Friday edition of the Morning Briefing. I'm Jeff DeForest, along with Mike Luby Lubitz. I'm very happy to be with you here on NoFilter.net. Although, you may not be so happy with us. <laughs> what went wrong? That's the question. What went wrong? We are so cold, Luby. How cold are we? We are so cold that I actually am considering eating the flesh of another human being, as if I had just crashed a plane into the Andes Mountains. And I'm trying to figure out how to stay alive in the uh, movie by the same name, Alive, which was out many years ago, but is very appropriate if uh, you're gambling and uh, you're treading and walking that sort of Damocles, that razor's edge. You're uh, sitting there trying to balance yourself uh, on just the thinnest of uh, possible uh, you know, lines of logic. And uh, you end up uh, doing something that is absolutely stupid and bizarre and following our selections here on the show. Now, we're not normally this bad. I, I don't know. I, I don't, well, you know, uh, I'm winning lifetime. Nobody can say that. I nobody can say that. <laughs> but nobody could look like a bigger loser than we did yesterday, oh, Michael Luby Lubitz. And uh, there, there's no shame in that because um, we, we literally, once again, uh, you know, we, we've said this before in a morning briefing, and, and you don't want to find yourself pleading with the gods of gambling and saying, don't fuck me, gods. Don't <laughs> fuck me. It seems to be a common theme so far this year. Wow. Why can't we just follow normal trends here? Right? Take a look at the teams that are doing lousy against the spread and figure, uh, okay, let's bet against them. Because it just doesn't hold up over the long period of time in the NFL. There's always some kind of reversal of form. The Chicago Bears last night came into their game against the Washington Commanders, having lost 14 in a row, Luby, 14 in a row. Beyond that, they were not only losing 14 in a row, they were getting smoked. Mm -hmm. There were people in Chicago that thought either Sally Fields or W.C. Fields would be a better choice at quarterback than Justin Fields, who they continue to have some kind of belief in because uh, they, they decided, hey, but let's go ahead and trade away the number one overall pick, which might have turned out to be a fortuitous move if they were going to take Bryce Young, because so far he looks like garbage with the Carolina Panthers. And of those three quarterbacks that were taken of the top four choices, uh, so far only C.J. Stroud is distinguishing himself in, in any kind of a fashion. Statistically, uh, Young is among the worst ever so far. It's only four games into his career, and uh, we don't know. Y your suggestion is uh, that he's so badly under wraps that uh, even Secretariat couldn't win with this kind of <laughs> stranglehold. It's like Carmine Abatello, the old harness driver, is uh, in the bike there, and uh, you know you, you saw these giant biceps because he's been holding horses back for so long that they were all going down at three to five. But uh, anyway, commanders uh, were laying. Eventually, the line went off six. And uh, there are no easy equations, uh, you know, in the National Football League. Uh, so, so you were getting six points with the Chicago Bears, who figured to lose this ball game, tried every way possible to lose in the hey, second right. half after being up twenty-seven to three, and uh, they end up getting thrashed. But you know what was at the root of all this, and we should have seen the signs from the gods of gambling, because uh, what happened earlier in the day? A, a, a very dark cloud, all of a sudden, that was cast upon the. A Bears uh, faithful as uh, their hero, they're one of their all-time greats. I mean, right oh, yeah. up there with Walter Payton and uh, any of the Bears uh, that have stood out over the years. And uh, Erlacher, I mean, uh, Dick Butkus checked out. And I was thinking to myself, okay, we gave out the commanders here. Uh, I, I was tempted to go ahead and, and support our own selection that we gave our adoring public on nofilter.net. Uh, a little bit of a push by uh, putting a couple of bucks on the uh, commanders as well. And sure enough, we get fucked because Dick Butkus <laughs> dies on that day. Now, now you might be thinking, hey, who on the Bears roster even knows who Dick Butkus was? They're probably more familiar with Butkus. Uh, they, they thought, really? Rocky's dog died? <laughs> they, they, would, <laughs> they had to Google the guy to figure out uh, who the hell he was. But uh, so maybe that had very little to do with it. Uh, Eberflus, is that the coach's name? Eberflus? Eberflus. Flus. Blues, yes. At halftime, uh, did he look like he uh, had just walked out of an IRS audit that did not go particularly <laughs> favorably? What do you mean you're up 27 to 3, Matt? Did you see what happened last week? Exactly. They were up like 30 points on a just pathetic Denver Bronco team uh, that was uh, desperately searching for their first win. And they spit the bit. They coughed it up. And uh, sure enough, uh, they ended up losing that ball game. And uh, at halftime, the 
sideline reporter asked Eber Fluss, hey, what are you going to do different uh, in the second half? And he said, we're going to pretend it's 0-0, zero, zero, which they may as well have done because uh, then they went right back into a mode where it looked like they were going to get crushed. Anyway, they, they win uh, the ball game 40-20, to 20, snap a 14-game losing streak, uh, a 14-game losing streak in which they were uh, giving up 33.4 points per game. Ridiculous. Across 14 games, imagine that. That had to include some incredibly lopsided scores. And uh, we're averaging uh, a defense yielding 400 yards per game. That reverses as field throws for 500 yards. And the uh, guy that they got in the deal where they traded away the number one pick, which turned out to be Bryce Young to Carolina, a DJ Moore, a fantasy player's dream, as uh, I think he scored like 49 fantasy points last he night. Did. If all you had was more on your roster, I'm not a fantasy player. But if all you had was more in your roster, I would presume that's almost enough to win but whatever head matchup head you were in. You're a fantasy man? No, I'm not. But I'm saying that's a great head start on Thursday to have 49 freaking points. Like that's a, that's a that's a nice move, especially when you've been getting nothing from DJ Moore. We asked a question yesterday uh, on the show. What, what do you do when you've lost the game of your life? And I, I don't know that that was the game of our lives, but uh, certainly uh, we we look like complete fools. <laughs> here and, and if you started to, am i sort of morphing into uh you're, you're probably not familiar you might be uh, in the horror movies there was a character actor a long time ago named peter laurie I've heard and of peter movies. laurie looked exactly I, I think they based the character in the wwe of the undertaker's manager paul bearer oh. remember the undertaker and, and he had a guy that looked like a funeral director as his yeah. manager uh, paul bearer uh, sort of uh, was a little bit uh, cut in the image of Peter Laurie, the uh, horror movie character actor from uh, the 50s and 60s. And uh, we're starting to look like that a little bit. I looked in the mirror today. I saw Paul fucking Bear. Anyway, that, that's not going to stop us because uh, when you're on a losing streak, I think I'm on a losing streak. I can't get no. Doesn't mean we can't get no more action. Movie, and we're going to be right back in action today. A couple of college games on the slate, and we talked to some of our handicapping experts. So, I have uh, all of our handicappers' plays, by the way. So if you do want to give our audience here their play, since License to Steal is on hold for right now, yes, uh, I have them ready if you do want those. So we're me. having a few production issues with uh, License to Steal. As in, uh, hey, what do you mean you didn't show up? <laughs> <laughs> is that the track? What are you talking about? Exactly. you got to be kidding me. All right, uh, we do have some selections uh, for this week, and uh, it, it should be uh, another interesting week, college football. I mean, you have some marquee matchups, uh, and uh, it gets underway tonight in college football. I already had a few games. I guess the next 52 nights, uh, beginning earlier this week, like Wednesday, we'll have oh, some Wednesday. kind of football yes. every single night because that, that's yes. the way it rolls right now, and especially, uh, well, I mean, you have the people at FanDuel and uh, DraftKings and all that. They're making the schedule now. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> Emmert, uh, the uh, NCAA uh, commissioner, who, who probably uh, is as effective as uh, Jose Suleiman was when he was running the World <laughs> Boxing Council. In fact, we've often asked a question, more crooked organization, World yeah. Boxing Council, the Let's NCAA, see. or I, I guess you, you could just look to Congress right now and say, um, what? who isn't on the tape? <laughs> is everybody grabbing money? I, I, I think so. All right, uh, so we had a couple of picks. Uh, the professor uh, gave us a couple of picks here uh, of uh, the two Friday games, Kansas State and uh, Oklahoma State. And uh, then Illinois goes against Nebraska. Hard to bet uh, on Nebraska after watching them so far this year. But uh, the professor's recommendation was uh, take the three and a half points with Nebraska because Illinois is so bad. Bad, yeah, they've been bad. So bad. And, and they've lost their quarterback now. And uh, they, they really they, they couldn't score at a Heidi Fleiss pool party if they walked in with Charlie Sheen. Hey, there's Charlie. Yeah. Exactly. Right, chicks are all over him, and uh, you're you're riding shotgun with Charlie Sheen at a pool party where it's nothing but hookers and whores and uh, ladies of the night. Not to uh, condemn uh, the uh, business fine. of prostitution, let's face it. I think Sister Jean was in that business. <laughs> God, <laughs> she's still around, man. She's alive. All right, she's still around. I, I think she threw out like the ceremonial first pitch at a Met game, which uh, may have been uh, the uh, reason for their ruination so far this year, but. Uh, uh, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was uh, so much ugliness uh, you know, coming from uh, the Illinois offense so far that uh, Nebraska would have to be a play. All right, uh, let's go through it, Luby, and uh, give the people uh, some of the choices that we've had so far. We, we talked to uh, two of our favorite handicappers, uh, the professor, who uh, usually is dynamite on college football, although uh, he's coming off a zipperoo, 0-3 last week, uh, kind of just hanging in there. Oh, we're waiting for him to explode this year. 
And then the World Championship handicapper Mark Lawrence, who, if you are a fan of handicapping and you were looking for information, especially when it relates to numerology and trends, uh, this man's research is impeccable, and he has a website called PlaybookSports.com. So uh, what do we have for the people out there on NoFilter.net uh, as we continue our quest to bury America? Michael Louie <laughs> Lubitz on their show. He is the professor. We have had him on License to Steal. Uh, yes, he's had an up and down season so far, but again, he's been doing shows with us for over a decade and finishes at worst every year, 60%, usually well higher than that. Uh, this week, he he dabbles. He's not our other handicapper, only does the dogs. So if you like uh, underdogs, Mark Lawrence is your man. The professor goes all over the place. He, like, he likes Washington State and UCLA, the under. Uh, he's not. He liked it more when it was at 67. It's now down to 60 but he still was a fan of Washington State and UCLA under. Both have really good defenses, and that game is at uh, in Los Angeles. Kansas State laying 11 in a hook over Oklahoma State tonight. Nebraska getting three in a hook over Illinois tonight. And then uh, tomorrow, Alabama laying one on the road to a and Yeah, they struggled against... Uh, they struggled against USF. They struggled against Texas, but they figured things out with Jalen Milrow. So he likes them laying one on the road for Texas A&M. And he likes LSU laying four and a hook over Missouri. Again, Missouri played okay. They, they are ranked. LSU struggled defensively, but they so far are superior talent-wise. So that's the professor. LSU laying four and a hook over Missouri. All right. Uh, a lot of the wise guys uh, in, in these games that are taking place on Saturday, uh, many liked Oklahoma. Yeah, over he, Texas. He I'm that. not sure that uh, I'm on board with that. Uh, a lot of people like Maryland uh, getting 19 and a half uh, against Ohio State. Ohio State hasn't uh, really lit the uh, scoreboard up uh, in the usual yeah. fashion. Uh, Ryan Day and, and that pathetic uh, speech that he made after the game there uh, when they beat Notre Dame and he was condemning a uh, senile old Lou Holtz. And uh, you know, when you have to attack a guy who's in his 90s like that, I mean, <laughs> That's come on, good. Ryan Day. You, you must know that uh, the contract's about to go in a shredder sometime soon. You're still going to get paid. I mean, uh, couldn't you have a little bit of respect uh, for a, you know, just, just an old senile bastard like uh, Lou Holtz? And uh, the LSU-Missouri game, I saw a lot of people uh, really favored Missouri uh, in that game. Because, uh, you know, maybe a bias against Brian Kelly, who finds a way to uh, choke off uh, most of these situations. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Professor, very much uh, in, in tune uh, with uh, the other side of that. And uh, saying that, uh, you know, all, all of those uh, games look to be a little bit fugazi to him. And that, uh, uh, especially the LSU game, uh, he, he liked yes. uh, LSU, the Tigers uh, over Missouri. All right, uh, Mark Lawrence, uh, playbooksports.com. He had, uh, I think, four selections for us, two college, yeah. two pros. Yes. Uh, Mark Lawrence to, uh, has a dagger in my heart, but I understand where he's coming from. Uh, Virginia Tech heads to Tallahassee uh, tomorrow. They are getting 20, I think 20 three and a hook or 24, depending on where, where your source is. Florida State has been out yarded the last two games. Boston College, they finished abysmally and almost lost. Uh, they did come back and beat Clemson, their only lead in overtime. They were out yarded in both of those affairs. Mark Lawrence is a trend guy. He is a stat guy. Does not like those stats. Not saying FSU will lose, but saying with, the, with those numbers, VT has played better. They are two and three. Uh, he likes Virginia Tech getting 23 and a hook, I think. 24 is where he had it over Florida State. Purdue is taking on Iowa. Iowa now without their quarterback, Cade McNamara. He's out for the year. Purdue, he has them getting, I think I, I've seen it both two and a hook or three, depending on where you're going. Purdue over Iowa. And in the NFL and the pros, Arizona has been a lot more up than people thought. They still don't know what they're going to do with their quarterback situation, but he likes Arizona getting two and a hook over Cincinnati, who's been a disaster. Joe Burrow is 100% hurt, but he's toughing it out to his own team's demise. He likes Arizona getting two and a hook over the Cincinnati Bengals and the Jets. Again, taking on a horrendous Denver Bronco team. They were game last week versus the Chiefs. He likes the Jets, I think, getting two and a hook over the Denver Broncos. All right. If you're looking at the National Football League, uh, so far the Rams have been the darlings of uh, the ATS against the spread. Uh, yes. the victory, one loss uh, column. Uh, the Rams 3-0-1 in the NFC. The Buccaneers are right there at 3-1. Cardinals, uh, as uh, you know, you would expect, uh, it considered to be a dog meat team that was going to be tanking the entire year. Yet somehow they've been a surprise and uh, are sitting there at uh, three and one against the spread. Cowboys are also three and one against the spread, as are uh, surprisingly the 49ers have been covering yes. uh, relatively easily. 
Uh, the Lions also have been a good uh, team to play. The Packers as well. Seahawks, 3-1 and one against the spread. The Dogs uh, of the NFC, the Panthers, who uh, I would have a tendency to bet against every week. Uh, I just oh, have been sense. totally unimpressed with the Carolina Panthers, 0-3-1. Uh, uh, the Saints, uh, so far, a bitter disappointment. Uh, how long before they just leave? Uh, do the uh, Saints play any games uh, across the pond there in London? Because it would be interesting to see if Dennis Allen was left there in England for the second time. <laughs> I love that these guys. Remember when he was the Raiders coach? They didn't even let him on the team plane there. <laughs> He's um, standing outside of Buckingham Palace with a stupid-looking furry hat on his head, uh, you know. Still, uh, you know, as he could possibly be, uh, you know, not moving for like uh, 12 hours as you try to figure out how, how, how the fuck am I going to get home. Uh, but they, they've they been awful against the spread, the uh, Saints with Dennis Allen. Uh, the G-Men who uh, come to Miami, and they'll be in our hometown, a, a highly coveted ticket. I, I had uh, many people think that somehow I can magically, like the amazing Kreskin, just pull tickets uh, out of a hat uh, for these games, even though I haven't been involved with the Dolphins organization professionally now for a couple of years, yeah, right. uh, although you know we follow them. Uh, that line has been just absolutely catapulting its way in the Dolphins' favor uh, from nine and a hook and now at 12 and a hook. Yeah, no, I get are, are the Giants that bad that you can discount them completely? Or, or uh, will they uh, just uh, muster up some dose of self-respect and come in here and uh, not give up the 11 sacks that they did? Daniel Jones uh, has been an atrocity so far for $160 million and a uh, pathetic performance last week. Where uh, Even Brian Dayball, as we said, could, could you look any angrier than <laughs> Brian Dayball did? As he ran over to his quarterback and told him, uh, you better stop sucking. I tell you, I'm the coach of the year. Exactly. What are you talking about here? Uh, 12 and a hook. That's a lot of points to lay uh, in the NFL. That. I just have a tendency to stay out of that. Yeah. Another clever play that people are looking at, too, are, are the Bills coming off that uh, four touchdown victory over the Dolphins, who had just put 70 up on the Denver Broncos. And, uh, you know, th th there is a lot of logic to follow in this uh, angle. And that is uh, Jacksonville, who did. Do they want to permanently move to London? Uh, I mean, there, there's some talk the owner about that. Does. The owner wants they, They're not playing uh, two to three games a year there. <laughs> like, Amazing. Yeah. I mean, how are they there for a second week in a row? What kind of crap is that, Roger Goodell? What about those people that bought personal seat licenses in Jacksonville? Exactly. I thought, well, this is a good investment. <laughs> Pretty soon you'll be seeing that on those ads, you know, for the uh, attorneys that, that pop up at three in the morning. And it says, do you need to get rid of your timeshare? <laughs> they'll have uh, attorneys that only specialize in unloading personal seat licenses that were purchased by fools that went ahead and made that move in the NFL. That, that's got to be weird, too, when you paid 30000 for the season to buy a, to have the privilege of buying a seat. And now yeah, you're spending like $300 a copy for the tickets. And the guy sitting next to you uh, found some scalper out in the parking lot. And he bought those tickets for 28 bucks. Exactly. <laughs> No commitment. And if he doesn't want to go to any more of these lousy giant games, he, he doesn't have to. But uh, the Bills are, are um, what? Uh, they're, they're laying points yeah, they're in this game in London, like five and a half points, I think. Well, they're the good team, and the Jags have struggled. But the Jags have played play in London like three times a year. It's like their second home. And they literally are playing two weeks in a row there. They didn't have to leave. They just stayed there like it's a home game, whereas the Bills have to travel across the freaking pond. After a big win last week, so they're up, they're down. I don't know. It's just a weird – it's it's a – the Jags are the underdog, but it feels like they're the team that has everything in their favor for this game. Biological clock for the Bills uh, is going to be 9.30 in the morning. Yep. And the Jaguars uh, have been, uh, you know, sipping tea and eating crumpets, uh, crumpets. for the last week <laughs> while they're getting ready to go ahead and, you know, shock the world by uh, beating the Buffalo Bills. Uh, uh, even if you thought the Bills were going to win this game, uh, there would be a likelihood you would have to believe that it was going to be closer than the five and a half point spread. So, uh, you know, the two out of three things, you know, they always talk about in pass plays, uh, three things can happen and two of them are bad. Yep. Um, in this case, it's uh, backing the bills. I, I think, uh, you know, a few things can happen and most of them are bad in terms of laying the five and a half points. So um, I don't know if I want to make that a strong recommendation because who would listen to us? <laughs> Enough, too, with Taylor Swift. Who are you more tired of, Taylor Swift or Mama Kelsey? I'm not at the Mama Kelsey place yet. I am sick of Taylor Swift. I, like, I, I, she didn't say my wife won't shut up. She didn't save the NFL. She didn't make it popular. She didn't do any of that garbage. You can be a Taylor Swift fan. She has done nothing to the NFL but annoy the crap out of me. Like, and, and, you know, I, I'm starting. I, I like Travis Kelsey as a player. He has a, a good personality, but does yeah. he have to be on? Who, who's on more commercials now, Travis Kelsey 
or Deion Sanders? <laughs> yeah, what is it Travis Kelsey se- selling? We, we've asked that. He's even selling, uh, you know, COVID nineteen shots. Yes, he is. He's selling and booster shots. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. I mean, for a rare time, you're thinking, you know what, Aaron? You got a point there. Here's uh, <laughs> Mr. Pfizer. <laughs> Pretty soon, he'll be like selling bras. This guy. I mean, you, you'll see him at. Well, you know what? This thing used to be a little bit tight. <laughs> Exactly. I, you know, come to think of it, Louie, uh, based on this shot, I might be able to use one. But um, I, I, I don't know. Mama Kelsey, uh, we mentioned uh, Sister Jean earlier. She, she's becoming, uh, you know, m- more prohibitive in terms of, uh, you know, you turn on a telecast and there's Mama Kelsey and you're thinking, I got to turn this off. It, it's like seeing Sister Jean throwing out the first pitch at, at a Marlins game. Uh, you know, just uh, enough already with this woman. And, and somebody uh, get Taylor Swift a sandwich, please. <laughs> Just, I, she can't dive into uh, one of those giant hoagies that they put in the uh, sweets. She, she's got to be uh, e- eating some, uh, you know, uh, granola bar while That's she's in sad. there that she brought in there that she, you know, smuggled in there herself. And, and how is it that she was able to get by security? Whereas uh, you can't even bring a bottle of water into a stadium <laughs> unless you grease somebody with 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good luck, everybody. Uh, you know, ho- hopefully, uh, you know, you won't have to get out the shovel and start throwing dirt on your body or uh, you know, maybe zip yourself up in a plastic bag after this week is what uh, we apologize once again. But, uh, you know, I, I don't mean to denigrate and, and uh, make disparaging remarks about the dead because I was a big Dick Buckus fan. But nonetheless, how did, how did he have to die yesterday? I mean, why? What, what, what cruel fate did we have to be subjected to to have Dick Buckus check out on a day where the Bears what we're going to be playing? And we were laying all of those points with the Washington Commanders last night. All right, uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good week. Uh, Hopefully, everybody will make a profit. Uh, We'll see you uh, on Monday with our next edition. From Mike Luby Lubitz, I'm Jeff DeForest. Catch you on Monday with the next edition of the Morning Briefing on NoFilter.net.